Calculating the association between exposure and outcome. In this presentation, we consider how to calculate the association between exposure and outcome. We'll use the results from a study of a cohort of diabetics. This looked at the risk of developing diabetic retinopathy given exposure to three different risk factors for the disease. In a cohort study, the association between exposure and disease is measured using the relative risk. Remember that, in a cohort study, we start with a population that is disease-free. Thus, the relative risk measures the risk of developing the disease given exposure in the whole population. We're going to calculate the relative risk of developing diabetic retinopathy, or DR, for three different exposures. Smoking, duration of insulin treatment, high systolic blood pressure. Note. Just to remind you that the denominators for calculating the relative risk are different from those of the odds ratio. The denominator is the total population. We'll use a cohort study of 1,521 individuals. 72 participants developed DR over the study period. 1,449 did not. First, let's look at the relative risk of developing DR if you're a smoker. 804 of the 1,521 participants had never smoked and 25 of these developed DR over the study period. 779 did not. 717 participants were smokers. 47 of these developed DR and 670 did not. To calculate the risk of DR in smokers, the exposed population, we divide 47 which is the number of smokers with DR, by 717, which is the total number of smokers. This equals 0 0.066. To calculate the risk of DR in non-smokers, the unexposed population, we divide 25, which is the number of non-smokers with DR, by 804, the total number of non-smokers. This equals 0 0.031. Now we can calculate the relative risk by dividing 0 0.066 by 0 0.031. This equals 2.1. This means that there is twice the risk of developing DR if you're a smoker. For our second example, let's look at the relative risk of developing DR in our study if you have a high blood pressure. This means a systolic blood pressure of 130 plus millimeters of mercury. Again, it is helpful to draw what is called a 2 by 2 table. You'll see that the numbers are not the same as for the previous calculation. 673 participants in the study had high blood pressure. 53 of these developed DR and 620 did not. 848 did not have high blood pressure. 20 of these participants developed DR and 828 did not. To get the risk of DR in participants with high blood pressure, that's the exposed population, we divide 53, the number of participants with DR and high blood pressure, by 673, the total number with high blood pressure. This equals 0 0.079. To get the risk of having the disease in participants without high blood pressure, we divide 20, the number of participants with DR but without high blood pressure, by 848, the total number without high blood pressure. This equals 0 0.024. The relative risk is 0 0.079 divided by 0 0.024. This equals 3.3. This means that there is more than three times the risk of developing DR if you have high blood pressure. In our third and final example, we look at the risk factor duration of insulin exposure. We will use 15 years or more for our exposed participants versus less than 15 years for the unexposed participants. So, what is the relative risk of developing DR for the members of the cohort who have been taking insulin for 15 years or more? Again, it is helpful to draw what is called a 2 by 2 table. And again, the numbers are not the same as for the previous calculations. Of the 1,521 participants, 463 have taken insulin for 15 years or more. 50 of these developed DR and 413 did not. 
1,058 have taken insulin for less than 15 years. 23 of these participants developed DR and 1,035 did not. To get the risk of DR in participants who had taken insulin for 15 years or more, the exposed population, we divide 50, the number with DR and longer insulin treatment, by 463, the total number with longer insulin treatment. This equals 0 0.108. To get the risk of DR in those with shorter insulin treatment, the unexposed population, we divide 23, the number with DR and shorter insulin treatment, by 1058, the total number with shorter insulin treatment. This equals 0 0.022. So the relative risk of DR given the exposure is 0 0.108 divided by 0 0.022, which equals 4.91. This means that there is approximately five times the risk of developing DR if you've taken insulin for 15 years or more. In summary, relative risk is the measure of association between exposure and outcome used in a cohort study. Relative risk measures the risk of developing the disease given the exposure in a disease-free population.